Oh, man. Guys, we are watching a train wreck happen live in front of our eyes. Very few times in the gaming industry has this actually happened where you see a company lose 50% of its value, then rebound, try to go private, while at the same time having investors try to force them to sell the company and have a vote of no confidence to kick out Tencent and Gilmo, who a couple years ago when Ubisoft was trying to sell NFTs to you, because that worked out really well. And then the Gilmo CEO saying that gamers are expecting extraordinary experiences and that making a solid game isn't enough. You, you guys are just too needy. You want you want too many good things. This has been an, a, an extraordinary time for Ubisoft. And frankly, we don't know where this is going to go. Then there's articles talking about how Ubisoft might go bankrupt. And on top of that, that Skull and Bones cost $850 million to make because it took 11 years and they kept remaking the game, yet somehow made a game worse than what it was based on. And I think that's kind of the core problem with Ubisoft. They don't know how to make a good game anymore. All they know how to do is copy and drive it to death until there's no more money. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing right now. To be frank, I think that Ubisoft fans deserve better than the Gilmo family. I think that's just like the most true statement that anyone can say about the company right now. There are so many IPs that they have driven to the ground or just kind of forgotten about. But I think the big news today, and there's other things we want to cover, but Ubisoft now, which is really the Gilmo family in Tencent, want to take the company private. And it's honestly kind of crazy. Because frankly, I don't know what else they could do other than sell their shares and leave and have their tail tucked between their legs or fight it and try to take everything private and then just continuously milk their IPs into oblivion. Because why not? But this all really started because of AJ Investments. So I'll bring up their follow-up talking about how AJ Investments has no confidence in Tencent and the Gilmo family. But the TLDR of this whole no confidence is that they want Ubisoft to sell the company to third parties at a fair price because frankly, they have no confidence that the Gilmo family can do anything with these IPs. And frankly, it really does stem from the top. Whether or not you're the CEO, the CEO hired the managers or the executive level and those executive levels hired these managers, they have burned a ton of money and very little that they even said in their investment call that they're not gonna even, they might not break even this year. And while 100 million they had last, I believe it was 100 and something, 120 million last year, entertainment and gaming in particular has done amazing in terms of profit margins in the past couple of years, yet Ubisoft is struggling. Why is that? Why, why are they struggling when everybody else have had record profits? And I think that really comes down to leadership. Whether it be quote unquote initiatives that they're pushing or just lackluster games that are buggy and formulaic. Let's be honest here. Is Assassin's Creed really innovative anymore? Are they doing anything different? Because to me, no, it's a formula and they just, it's a COD. They just kind of produce a new one every couple of years. People play it, people drop it. But in general, the audience has become, they've become exhausted to that IP because they're not doing anything new. With so many good games out there, with such a plethora of amazing games from indie to AAA, not quadruple A, by the way. Yeah, not quadruple A. That why would you pick an Ubisoft game? That, that's the real question. Why would you pick an Ubisoft game when there are so many other better options? And I think that's the core of the issue is why pick an Ubisoft game when the CEO himself says that making a solid game isn't good enough anymore? Gamers are expecting extraordinary experiences. And it's like, no, no, no. I think it's that the quality bar has been pushed so high. It's a, it's a much bigger problem. There are forever games now, which people massively invest their time in and don't want to go other places. So again, that's going to hurt their bottom line. But the other aspect is there are single player and co-op games that are telling beautiful, masterful stories where Ubisoft does not. Ubisoft takes 11 years to make a Sea of Thieves clone that apparently costs $850 million. And again, take this with a grain of salt because this number hasn't been fully vetted, but they built this in Singapore. They use government funds for this on top of their own money and investor money. But this is an astonishing figure. When you think about an 11 year game cycle, it's not terribly surprising. It's just an astronomical number for this game to fail so bad and to be released in such a disarray with such a soulless game. Again, and we go back to that, there's no soul in Ubisoft's games. There's none. And that's kind of a big issue. 
But again, the Gilmore family and the CEO says that Star after Star Wars Outlaws, which caused their stock price to plummet. But now we're starting to see a resurgence. But I feel like this is kind of a wake up call for Ubisoft and saying like, hey, you can't just take an IP, make something that's half baked and then expect it to succeed. Those days are over. Those days are gone. And I don't think they've learned yet. And I think they're going to learn through pain, but they might just say, screw you and take it private and continue to do the same thing. They could probably just license out their IP to Tencent. Tencent can go make some mobile games out of it and they can just continuously bank on what little they have left. And that's a shame. But let's just dive into this article a little bit. On the heels of the Assassin's Creed Shadows delay, which had a lot to do with the feedback they were getting from the Japanese audience and the American audience, everyone not being happy, but then you have Ghosts of Yote, which also is going to eat Assassin's Creed Lunge. It hits in that same kind of genre that they had to delay their, their game. And what they do with it, who knows? And I don't think that this delay is frankly going to help them. Because I think intrinsically there is an issue at Ubisoft, which is they continuously do not innovate. They do not make a good game. They just take the same formula that worked 10 years ago and are hoping that it succeeds. That's insanity to me. That is absolutely insanity. And that really just comes down to leadership from the top. Whoever is your studio manager, whoever is your creative director for these projects, they're failing. And frankly, there kind of needs to be some accountability here. But he was speaking on an investor call today and Gilmo reckoned that good just ain't good enough. Today's challenging market with gamers spending extraordinary experiences, delivering solid quality is no longer enough. I, I might cut in some hilarious star wars outlaws bugs here but i mean but telling everybody that you have to restart your star wars outlaws game because there's bugs and corrupts the save and they have to just now reset is not a quality experience i'm not sure what ubisoft thinks is a quality experience anymore because it's not what we expect it's not a quadruple a game so I feel like this, the CEO and the Gilbo family are just so disconnected from their studios that they might just believe the bullshit that they're spewing. And this is like typical PR speak. We strive for excellence in all aspects of our work, and I'm, I'm sure you do, but your excellent is not good enough. It, it is not, unfortunately. And I think, again, we always talk about the free market. The free market is very much spoken that X Defiant was trash. It was uninspired and no one enjoyed that game. It felt like a worse dirty bomb in 2024. That's again is a, a crowning achievement to somehow regress in your games. But again, he goes into the further detail and saying how sales were not great for Ubisoft's open world Star Wars game. Uh, that's now coming to Steam. And again, that's a whole separate issue of Ubisoft kind of giving up a little bit on trying to funnel more people into their app. But now in the Star Wars Outlaws, they're giving a DLC for free. Please play it. And it's just not going to work. It's falling on deaf ears because, frankly, why would you play this game? The TLDR here is that the CEO very much lives in a bubble. And that is very dangerous that he, even in the investor calls, are really trying to downplay the performance of Star Wars Outlaws, the delay of Assassin's Creed Shadow, their stock price tanking. But I will say they have recovered in the past day. They have recovered 30% in one day, which is not bad. On the news, they're going to try to go private. But I feel like this is also just the investors just sniffing the hopium that maybe they can recover some of their lost profits. But I don't think this is going to happen. I feel like they're going to have an all-out war, and the people that are going to lose, frankly, if Tencent and the Gilmo family stay in charge, is going to be us. It's going to be the audience, the consumer. We're going to lose because they're just going to produce more and more mobile dribble or offshoots of different IPs that go in really odd ways like Division Heartland and just nobody wants those things. But I think one of the big things I do want to dive into is just this report here that blows my mind. This absolutely blows my mind that this is happening. And again, we're jumping back and forth on a lot of different things happening with Ubisoft, but take it in mind, this has all been happening in a month. But this report really is damning and it really kind of just shows the inadequacy of the, of the management over there. And I feel like this gives them more ammo to AJ Investments on really the vote of no confidence in the Gilmo family. The fact that you can spend $850 million on a game and, it, and, it, and I think people are shocked at that number, but you have to realize once the game is in trouble, right? It, now you're on a clock. Say you spend three years making a game and after those three years it's not fun like it's just it's gone down a path it's really not enjoyable but you've spent the money well now you need to spend even more money 
possibly double to rush with outsourcers or rush with crunching to solve the issues that are happening. But once they were in trouble, it just started going downhill, just like their stock price. But the alleged source within Ubisoft told the YouTube Endymion that Skull and Bones cost between 650 and 850 million over its 10 year production. And I think that this is also taken with a grain of salt because we are not gonna get a verified person. We're just gonna, it's just gonna say a source. But I do tend to believe this one just from my experience in the game industry. They added the investment is non-profitability uh, are causing the company's financial ruin. And I think that's why you're starting to see the investors speak up and say, hey, you know what? Like, we're not going to get our money back. We, we need to take this company in a new direction. But released earlier this year, Skull & Bones faced criticism due to its $70 price tag and lackluster world graphics and mechanics. I mean, yeah, you make a character, you jump on a ship, the ship is your main character, and then you go find resources on your ship. The whole concept is bad and should never have been released in that. Black Flag was better than Skull and Bones. Everything was better <laughs> than Skull and Bones. And I'm not sure again how Ubisoft can digress this much. But many players have noted the difference in quality and fun factor between this game and Ubisoft's successful pirate game Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Popular comparison has been different in water physics and graphics, released in 2013. And I think that's something to say too. How have Ubisoft games somehow regressed in multiple ways from gameplay fun factor to the actual visuals that in 2013, somehow they look better than what we have now? Are they just not updating their engines? Are they running into tech debt because they continuously patch and mold engines instead of using new ones like Epix? Maybe they just don't want to pay anyone else any more money because they're already bleeding some. But the downgrade is perhaps due to the bloated development the game suffered. For 10 long years, rented prototypes and delays left their besmirching mark on the game. More time and money were pulled into the product Ace has been released one way or another. And I think after a certain point, yeah, you kind of have to just release it. If you have spent $850 million and you guys are still not happy with the product, that comes down to management. That comes down to execs and management. That has not come down to the game designer or the 3D modeler. That's on leadership. So this is what we were talking about, by the way. Was Ubisoft Singapore leading the development was arguably the only reason the game had to be released. The company received subsidies from the Singapore government, which also mandated the Singaporean branch of the French developer must also launch original brand new IP in the next few years. They're taking government funding and it's probably not a small amount of money and then burning it to the ground. They would have gotten more money by taking that money, putting it in a giant pile, setting it on fire and live streaming it than they would have done making this game. But as of writing, this game has been true to its live service promise in a way and improved many areas it suffered at launch. However, in an all-time peak of 2,615 players on Steam, it might be too late. And I think this is kind of a big thing that we talk about is that you get first impressions and you might, you might get a second impression. You might get a second chance, chat, but you're not going to get a third. And I feel like Ubisoft has burnt their goodwill. And now the Ubisoft IP is being harmed by the games that they are releasing. I think if you heard that Splinter Cell was being released by a company that wasn't Ubisoft, I think you would actually be excited for it. But as soon as you hear the Ubisoft development is releasing a game, there is now a stigma around it. And that's not good. That's not something that can be fixed in a timely manner because now they have just released flop after flop after flop, whether it be an agenda based, you know, slop or just a bug ridden game or just lackluster compared to its competition. All these factors tie in to the IP. But if these rumors are true, this would explain why Ubisoft's recent cash and reputation losses of 2024 to a close. Ubisoft standing as a big name in the industry is at its worst. It very much is. So the Alba has also mentioned that management announced an internal investigation to align their execution to their ideals of creating games for fans and players that everyone can enjoy. But I don't feel like they're gonna enjoy, I don't feel like they're gonna enjoy looking in the mirror. I don't feel like they're gonna really like what they find here and their capacity to change. Which is why, frankly, now that AJ Investments has gathered 10% of the company's shareholders to force a proxy vote, I feel like that's a good thing. I feel like Ubisoft is very much in need of new management. But Ubisoft has been famous for more controversial subjects, just like saying, feel comfortable not owning your games and that you're really just having a licensing, you know, you buy a license on top of releasing NFTs 
and that whole kerfluffle, right? They just can't win. And I think they really need to sit down and realign. And unfortunately, what that's probably going to mean, frankly, is that whether or not it goes private or if the AJ Investments force a, a sale to another third party, that's going to mean layoffs. That's going to mean a massive realignment in terms of what, who's doing what, where the major problems happened, and having some accountability. But that's probably going to mean multiple studios closing down and just trying to re focus on releasing one or two solid hits. And I and I and I know it sucks and I know that frankly there is we don't need any more layoffs in the game industry right now, but I feel like that's the next step af after we get through all of this and whether or not they go private or it gets sold, that's the next logical step. And I hate it. And hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully Ubisoft takes their Everybody in Ubisoft's management takes their metaphorical head out of their ass and actually try to, to make a decent game. But I don't have any faith that they will. But let's talk about the video, guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the situation with Ubisoft. Whether you think the Gitwell family should take this private or whether or not they should just sell and walk away with their millions and millions of dollars and just give it to somebody who's going to give a shit. Or should Tencent take over and, you know, make 15 mobile games? I don't know. But I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this type of content. I'll talk to you when another thing at Ubisoft blows up, which probably won't be long. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.